Welcome to Introduction to Accounting, Preparing for a User's Perspective. Inventory Cost Flow Assumptions, FIFO, LIFO, Moving Weighted Average. This discussion explains how management uses inventory cost flow assumptions to record the sale of inventory, even when it does not know the specific unit cost of the actual inventory items sold. For example, let's assume a company were to purchase one gumball for $1, one for $2, then three more at $4 each i.e. a total purchase cost of $12 for these last three. The cost of goods available for sale during the period would be $15, made up of three different inventory cost layers. A $1 layer with one unit cost in it, a $2 layer with one unit cost, and a $4 layer with three unit costs. Now imagine that a customer paid $10 to purchase one of the five gumballs, but management has no idea specifically which gumball the customer bought. Was the cost of the gumball $1, $2, or $4? Well, because management doesn't know which gumball was sold, it will simply assume which unit cost was sold. Well, because management doesn't know which gumball was sold, it will simply assume which unit cost was sold by using one of the following three cost flow assumptions. FIFO, assume the first unit cost in of $1 was the first unit cost to be expensed out of $1. LIFO, assume the last unit cost in of $4 was the first unit cost to be expensed out of $4. Moving weighted average, don't even try to assume which unit cost went out first and simply expense an average unit cost computed as $15 total cost of inventory on hand just before the sale divided by 5 units on hand just before the sale which equals a $3 moving weighted average cost per unit. So when management cannot specifically identify the unit cost of what was sold, it has to use a cost flow assumption to record the expense. It simply is the best management can do with the information it has available to it at the time. As noted, the three most common cost flow assumptions are first in first out, FIFO, last in first out, LIFO, and moving weighted average. I recommend you treat unit costs as little cost stickers, which are theoretically stacked up in order on the date they are purchased. These unit costs are then reassigned to cost of goods sold on a FIFO, life, or moving weighted average basis, as described below. 1. First in, first out. FIFO. Management assigns the unit cost of the first unit purchased in to become the unit cost of the first goods sold out. This would require a debit to cash of $10, assuming a cash sale, and a credit to sales revenue of $10, a debit to cost of goods sold for $1, increasing that expense, and a credit to inventory $1, decreasing inventory. FIFO's gross margin turns out to be $9 as follows. Sales price of $10 less cost of goods sold of $1 equals gross margin. So the original cost of goods available for sale of $15 can be reconciled at the end of the period as follows. Cost of goods sold of $1, which is represented by one unit at $1, and the ending inventory of $14, which is equal to one unit at $2 plus three units at $4, equals total cost of goods available for sale during the period of $15. What this reconciliation shows is that the cost of all of the company's goods that were potentially available for sale during the period will either have been expensed during the period as cost of goods sold, $1 in this case, or will still be on hand in ending inventory, $14 in this case. 2. Last in, first out. Management assigns the unit cost of the last unit purchased in to become the unit cost of the first goods sold out. Once again, on the sales side of this, it's a debit to cash of $10 and a credit to sales revenue of $10. Now on the expense side of this, we have to debit cost of goods sold for $4, thus increasing that expense, and credit inventory $4, thus decreasing the inventory. LIFO's gross margin turns out to be $6 as follows. Sales price of $10 less cost of goods sold of $4 equals gross margin of $6. So the original cost of goods available for sale of $15 can be reconciled at the end of the period as follows. Cost of goods sold is $4 equals one unit at $4 resulting in ending inventory of $11, represented by one unit at $1, one unit at $2, and two units at $4, resulting in the total cost of goods available for sale of $15. What this reconciliation shows is that the cost of all the company's goods that were potentially available for sale during the period will either have been expensed during the period as cost of goods sold, $4, 
or will still be on hand in ending inventory $11. 3. Moving Weighted Average Just before each sale, management will take the total cost of all inventory it has on hand of $15 and divide it by the total number of units it has on hand of 5 units to arrive at a weighted average unit cost of $3. Which weighted average unit cost will become the unit cost of the first goods sold out? Debit cash $10 representing the amount received upon the sale, credit sales revenue $10 representing the amount earned, debit cost of goods sold $3 which is the average cost of the one unit sold, and credit inventory thus reducing it $3. Moving weighted averages gross margin turns out to be $7 as follows. Sales price of $10, cost of goods sold $3 equals a gross margin of $7. So the original cost of goods available for sale of $15 can be reconciled at the end of the period as follows. Cost of goods sold at $3, which is the one unit at 3, and then ending inventory is $12, representing 4 remaining units at an average cost of $3 per unit, equals total cost of goods available for sale of $15. What this reconciliation shows is that the cost of all of the company's goods that were potentially available for sale during the period will either have been expensed during the period as cost of goods sold of $3, or will still be on hand in ending inventory of $12. In summary, the inventory cost flow assumption a company uses does have an impact on the gross margins, net income, and ending inventory the company will report. Here is a summary of the differences described above. FIFO shows a gross margin of $9 and ending inventory of 6. LIFO, gross margin of $6, ending inventory of 9. Moving weighted average, gross margin of $7, ending inventory of $8. You should notice that in this example prices were rising indicating an inflationary environment. In inflationary environments FIFO will result in the highest gross margins and the lowest ending inventory. However in deflationary environments LIFO will result in the highest gross margins and the lowest ending inventory. In all cases the physical reality of the movement of the goods and the purchases was exactly the same. It's simply the cost flow assumption used that's changing the results reported on the income statement and the balance sheet. I hope this made sense to you. Get ready for the inflation and deflation videos coming.